Hello, happy travelers. I am Kevin from the Awkward Tourists, and we just got back from an incredible 12 day trip in Kenya. In this video, I'm gonna break down all the money that we spent on our entire trip. We're gonna be factoring all these costs for two people with shared accommodation, so just keep that in mind. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first category that I'm gonna talk about is transportation. If you've been following along with us, you know that we always fly standby, and we don't usually cover that part in these budget breakdowns. That's just because Kelly works for an airline, our flights are extremely discounted and sometimes free, so we're not gonna really talk about the international flights. If you wanna learn a little bit more about the flight attendant life and those travel perks, we're gonna put a link to the Awkward Flight Attendant, which is a new YouTube channel that we have just started, highlighting all things flight attendant, and you can find that link in the description. That being said, we did have to purchase one flight in Kenya, and that was the flight from Nairobi to Masai Mara National Reserve. There was no way for us to use the employee benefits on this flight, and it was pretty expensive. To take this tiny little plane on a one hour flight, it cost us $280 per person round trip. There is an option to drive yourself instead of taking that expensive flight, but it's a five hour drive on dirt roads and we didn't really feel like the savings was worth it for us. Currently for US citizens, you need to purchase a visa to visit Kenya. Those visas cost $55.20, bringing the total that we spent for that to $110.40. They do not offer visas upon arrival, so you have to do that before your actual trip. It's super easy though, you just go online a couple days before, fill out a few forms, but it does cost a little bit of money. Also going along with entry requirements, it is highly recommended that you get a yellow fever vaccine. Luckily, our insurance covered the vaccine, so we didn't have to pay any money out of pocket, but that might be an added expense if your insurance doesn't cover vaccines like that. When we were in the bigger cities, we used Uber for most of our public transportation. Uber's great to use on any international destination just because it takes away the factor of actually having to pay a taxi driver or negotiate a price. There's a lot of scams that can happen with taxi drivers, so when the price is set, you don't have to handle cash and you can just pay through the app, it's a bonus. We spent $54.64 on Uber during our whole trip Uber rides are really, really affordable there. But Uber is only really available in the bigger cities like Nairobi and Mombasa, so keep that in mind. That brings our grand total for transportation on this trip to $725.04. Now let's get into accommodation. We stayed in three different hotels during our trip in Kenya. When we first arrived, we stayed four nights in Nairobi. We stayed at the Hilton Doubletree, and for four nights, it cost us $280.80. We had a great deal with Hilton for this stay, but accommodation in Nairobi can really run the gamut, so you can get something very budget, or you can get something that costs quite a bit more. After Nairobi, we headed to Masai Mara, and we stayed in a luxury tented camp right outside of the reserve. This safari lodge was the Neptune Mara Rianta. Now this safari lodge was definitely a splurge. We stayed at this resort for three nights. We paid for half of the trip with Chase Ultimate Reward credit card points. I think it was like 80,000 points that we used and it still cost us $834.25 out of pocket. It was definitely a little more expensive, but this safari camp was inclusive of all food and drinks. So that factored in a little bit to the higher cost. The third and final place that we visited on our trip was Diani Beach. Here we stayed at the Kinondo Poa Resort for four nights and it cost us $391.80. Accommodation was definitely our most expensive category on this breakdown. And in total, we spent $1,506.86. Our next category is food. We tend to book accommodation that includes breakfast and all of our hotels that we stayed at during this trip included free breakfast. We got free breakfast at the Hilton because of the credit card we have. Card, I think we've talked about it a few different times. The Hilton Honors card is an amazing card if you wanna gain status with Hilton hotels. We will link that down in the description if you're interested. Like I said, the Safari Lodge included all meals and drinks, so that cut down on our prices quite a bit too. When we arrived in Nairobi, the first few days we were really struggling with jet lags. They have Uber Eats in Nairobi, and we used that quite a bit on those first few days. The total amount that we spent for food on our 12 day trip was $346.70. We managed to eat pretty cheap. Our fourth category is activities. The biggest expense that we had in this category is definitely our safari drives. Now, when we had booked the luxury safari camp, we were under the impression that all-inclusive included game drives as well. Unfortunately, it didn't. And 
that was a little bit of a disappointment because it was an added expense that we didn't know we were gonna have to pay. We ended up going on two different game drives. It ended up costing us an extra $75 per person per game drive, making it an unexpected $300 expense. We also gave the staff about $170 in tips. We spent Kelly's birthday there and they made it really, really special for us. Also, if you're going to Masai Mara National Reserve, most of the time, if you stay outside of the park, the entry fee to the park is not included. The entry is a little steep too. It's $80 per person per day. This really can't be avoided, but it's an expense that you need to keep in mind. If you watched our Nairobi video, you'll know that we went to the Nairobi Elephant Orphanage. This excursion was sponsored by Get Your Guide. Actually didn't pay anything out of pocket for it. However, we did adopt an elephant and donated $100 to the trust. We brought it home with us. Yeah, we didn't bring the elephant home though. It's <laughs> like, you get a piece of paper and you adopt an elephant, but it makes a great gift, which we gave to Kelly's mom. The next day we went to the Giraffe Center, which is another really popular thing to do in Nairobi. We took our own transportation there and the entrance fee cost $11.25 per person. If you wanna do this tour, it is really popular to do the Elephant Orphanage and the Giraffe Center in the same day. That trip will run you about $90 per person and it includes transportation to and from your hotel. We'll link the Get Your Guide tour that we took in the description below. We're gonna have a lot of links in the description below, aren't we? That brings our grand total for activities to $913. For our last category, we had quite a few miscellaneous expenses. On this trip, I wanted to make sure I had a really good zoom lens. So I rented a 400 millimeter lens from Lens Rental. That ended up costing us $203 with shipping and insurance, but I'm so glad I had it. The photos I got were incredible, totally worth it. And it was my first time ever renting a lens. I can definitely recommend Lens Rental, they were great. We also took out roughly $240 in cash during our stay. You can pay for pretty much everything with a credit card, but there's a couple things that you can't. We paid for a motorcycle rental in Diani. We bought some SIM cards in the airport. I think you can normally pay with a credit card then, but their credit card machine was just down at the time. A few different souvenirs and tips along the way. That brings our miscellaneous expense total to $443. Those are the five categories that we spent money in, bringing our grand total to $3,933.89. Now this was just our experience. We were here for Kelly's birthday and we splurged a little bit. So you can definitely do Kenya for a lot cheaper if you want to. Kenya can be extremely budget or you can go even more luxury than we did and stay at some really high end places. If you haven't seen all of our vlogs from Kenya, please go back and check all of those out. We had a really incredible time and it is a trip that we will not forget anytime soon. Also, stay tuned for our next video. Kelly is going to be doing some travel tips that will help make your Kenya trip extremely enjoyable and affordable. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and if you have any questions about Kenya, be sure to hit us up in the comments, we will do our best to respond. As always, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, this is Kevin from The Awkward Tourist. Peace out. Yeah, I can't see your hands at all, so you, you know, unless you have them up here, so. And we booked half of our stay with Chase Travel Points, and we booked half of our stay, and we booked half of our stay with Chase, BT Dub, she's gotta look up how much credit card points we sent, spent. Cause I didn't write that down on my paper. When we, and also we took, and also we ordered a few different meals. And also, right when we, right when we,